Yeah, it's time to play uh, C4. Okay, C4, E6. Looks like he's setting up to play an immediate uh, D5, which he did. So um, I can go ahead and push this pawn now. If he kicks by knight, it can land on um, E4. And it's still true. If he kicks my knight, it can land on e4 now that I've got the bishop here. But I do need to keep this diagonal clear. Here, let's uh, bring the bishop out. See if um, we can get some pressure on this knight here. Okay, so now I'm not worried. If he kicks the knight, I can come here. I've got a pin and I've got support from a pawn. So I can block the bishop and just get a normal kind of setup here. So I could take and I could drop back. If he pushes the pawn, I can take it with the knight too. Let's just drop back. So we got kind of a reverse uh, dragon set up here. I'm gonna going to castle. He's got uh, handy development. He got his rook to the center. He got two pieces out. He hasn't developed his queen side at all. So it'll be interesting to see what his plan is there. His pawn is well defended, uh, uh, so I don't need to worry about him attacking it. Um, I think uh, knight to f4 is kind of interesting, but I guess he just trades it off. <clears throat> Let's start by putting a rook on the C file. That's often a good, a good thing to do. Then, uh, yeah, let's prepare something like a um, minority attack over here. Okay, well now that the uh, pawn is blocked, <coughs> I mean, the, the queen's view of this pawn is blocked momentarily, but he can just take here with check anytime. Let's see how he takes back. I mean, I can always play e3 if I don't like the, uh, the pressure here on the e-pawn. e4 maybe is playable. Can I try that? E4 takes, takes, then he takes here, I take back, and then he takes this pawn. Okay, we'll go E3. See if he wants to give up his bishop here. I could follow with D4 or... Uh, Yeah, I guess d4 is the thing to do. I don't know, it's tempting to play uh, <laughs> e4 again. Now it hits the bishop. Takes, takes, it's still hitting the bishop. Knight takes, takes. Let's try it. This way, if he takes my knight, I take his bishop. So I think it's, I gained a tempo here. plays bishop to g4, I think I'll play f3. Keep that, keep that tension there. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> okay, so now the threat is to take my knight and then take the pawn. So let's just defend it. Let's uh, get out of the way of that nasty rook. If he checks my king, I can walk over to the h1 square. And it gives, if he gives me time, I'll put my bishop on e3. It's a good square for that bishop. And then centralize my rooks. Maybe prepare to play uh, f4, f5. At the right time, it could perhaps trap this bishop. Yeah, I thought he wouldn't let me uh, play the move I wanted to play. Although I was expecting a check with the bishop rather than the queen. At least Nikolai has started to use a little bit of time. I was falling behind in time in the last few games I played. It was causing me trouble. Okay, so he moved his queen to a uh, light square, which is interesting. Anyway, yeah, let's let's put this bishop on the dark square, on on the e three square like that. Let's uh, move the queen somewhere. Nice. He, he defended his pawn, I guess. That was his thing there. Yeah, if I just step the queen aside, then I, I am threatening this knight move. <clears throat> the knight moves with a discovered attack on the queen. Yeah, so where does the queen go after knight to... Uh, <clears throat> knight to d4, for example. Knight d5, rather. Let's see. I can keep chasing it for a while if it uh, tries to move around. It could go, I guess, to um, it could go to uh, yeah, there. I was thinking b3, a4 or b3. Huh? So I can take here with check. Get into a game with just bishops. Let's see, if I kick this bishop, he takes my knight, I take back with a pawn. Actually, the pawn is reasonably well supported. Where does his bishop go? The pressure on my b-pawn here was uh, feeling a little awkward. That's why maybe queen b3 was better. Put more pressure on the b pawn. But that explains why I'm kicking, kicking this bishop away if I can. So he goes that way. So I take here. It's a pawn. He takes back with a pawn. Then I. Try and throttle his bishop. Not sure.
I could just uh, win this pawn too. I can. I just saw that. So let's go ahead and take this pawn, huh? Then find some way to walk in on the uh, king side here. Maybe bishop f4, exchange, and then queen f4. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, you can you can put your bishop there. So yeah, let's do bishop f4. Threaten to come in on the king side here. Mm hmm. Okay. We'll try the check here then. Just want to check the king away from this uh, pawn on f6 here. Looks like he's having trouble finding a move. There he goes. Okay, so the check. And queen takes. Mate threat here, mate threat here. Looks like I got him. Let's take a quick look on the analysis board to make sure uh, this was really, uh, yeah, mate in two. That's what I thought. There's, there's nothing he can do here. Well, pretty intense game, I thought. <laughs> here, let's see if we can uh, get another game, get a rapid game. Well, I did c4, so let's try um, e4. Okay, a uh, center counter game or Scandinavian. Ah, oh, that's the way I play it with the uh, knight move. It's an interesting, interesting way to play. Uh, I don't do that. Is there any reason to um, worry about that? Just develop normally. I don't know. It looks like uh, I'm facing one of these aggressive players who tries to uh, win from the outset. I'm playing the most aggressive move every time. I don't. I don't think that's a, a good strategy. Sometimes it works though, so I can't say for sure. Not not my favorite strategy, I guess. Okay, so he's piling up pressure here. He can take the knight and then I take back and then he can take this pawn. So I could either defend the pawn or I could attack his queen. And then defend the pawn. Let's try that. Let's attack the queen first. That's pretty, pretty typical of this type of Scandinavian where he takes with the queen. I mean, the way I play with the knight is so the knight can take the pawn. That's the whole idea. So now this is not in any danger, this pawn, and I can go ahead and castle. <clears throat> I 
maybe there was a trick here I could have played, say knight move to hit the queen. But when he takes the bishop, he hits my queen. Okay, he did. He did go with the rook there. So if I just develop, he could attack. Well, I, I think developing and defending the pawn is reasonable. I think that's a reasonable thing to do because if he attacks with this pawn, I don't, I don't, can't take it because of, this guy is pinned, but I can push. So let's just defend. And yeah, I still have this idea of pushing the pawn uh, if it gets into trouble. So he might do something like um, d6. Uh, what's that? e6. e6, rather. But I kind of like the idea of uh, pushing the pawn and then moving my queen out of the way. Then an exchange here would, uh, you know, in the long run, if I can get a bishop here and a queen here. Uh, uh, oh, this pawn was in the way to push this knight out of the way. <laughs> I guess I'd have to push the pawn again. <laughs> Something like that. It's sometimes a, a trick that you have in these uh, Scandinavian type openings where you uh, give up a pawn in the center but you get a bishop here and it takes something over on the wing. Counterplay. It happens more before they've castled, yeah. So I think at this point I have to... Uh, don't want to sit there and let him take that pawn so let's push it. And he doesn't have to move the knight right away because the um, because the d pawn is pinned, so he can he can just develop a piece or something. But I like this better than if he had uh, first he could have first played uh, e6 there to try and stop me from playing that, and then tried to find a way to get more pressure on this pawn. That might have been an interesting way to play. Let's see. When he moves the knight, there is maybe a potential over here. You have to always be careful your bishop doesn't get trapped by a move like that <laughs> when you take a pawn in the corner. And at the moment, it's defended by the knight. But the knight, I think, I think eventually will have to move. Well, it's good uh, my opponent is taking his time. I think I played a rapid game recently where, where my opponent uh, uh, was moving... Blinding, blindingly fast the whole time and ended up uh, beating me and having more time on his clock than when he started. So I don't, I don't like that. I want them to take their time. That's the purpose of the rapid game. So you have time to think about your moves. Let's see. The knight could go here. Um, and then he would probably trade bishops. I'm, I'm, I'm not threatening to take the bishop, though, because he could always take back with the knight. He might try and kick my knight. Ah, so he wants to do some rapid attack. Yeah, so like I said, I'm going to move my queen out of the way. Force his knight to move. So this is interesting. If I go with the queen all the way over to the... Uh, h file and the knight moves and i can really take h7 with my queen threatening to check his king here take another pawn wreck his queen side plans even better than putting it on b3 put it on a4 and uh if he just continues the attack
I'm not sure. You know, I could put my knight here first. Put my knight here. To hit the queen and uh, blockade. I don't want to go wild over here on the queen side when, um, okay, so now his knight is hanging. I didn't want to go wild on the queen side while he had his threats pending on my king. It is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, but that, that move loses because now his knight is hanging and his queen is hanging. Well, no, the queen could go somewhere to attack the uh, knight, huh? Okay, I take his knight. He takes my knight. I take here with check. Hmm. If I had a tempo move with this knight, huh? Still, yeah, I think it's better to go ahead and take this knight. Let him take my knight. And then um, take here with check. Destroy that king side. That's the idea. And then maybe just to develop my knight. I was thinking about the queen check next, but uh, he just blocks it. I don't think that really... Ah, oh, he decides to keep the pawn as a shield. Okay. Anyway, yeah, develop the knight. And we'll see what his next plan is. Knight here hitting the um, the two pawns on either side of the king looks pretty good. Also, rook, rook to the center, threatening um, to just take here. Okay, if he plays knight to um, g5, I do have to worry about this pawn here. So I went there, okay. Um, yeah, so knight here. Threatening uh, to take on h7. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I have to block here. I have to be careful that his queen doesn't get on this diagonal. <laughs> this is a very, this is a tenuous kind of defense. I don't really intend to take because I would open this up to a mate here. 
but it's just to prevent the queen from coordinating with the knight on the uh, h7 square there. Yeah, so he takes the bishop. I still have knight and uh, queen coordinating on h uh, a, a7. And yeah, his coordination is on the h2 square. I have to watch out for. Okay, so he managed to... Um, block that, but I can just take here. So there's something better. I'll take, he takes, and I can actually just pin that uh, rook and then pile up on it. Um, yeah, so which one is better? Or I could take this one, which uh, hits his rook and gives me a couple pawns that are connected here. I think I like the idea of pinning this rook, though. Let me exchange off a pair of rooks here. Queen. Okay, so if I just trade queens, bring my rook out, am I just winning? Or maybe I should take this pawn here that he's offered so kindly offered. <clears throat> yeah, why? Oh yeah, the queen supports it there. So, check here is not happening. Check here is interesting. Okay, he can get a pawn back, it looks like. <clears throat> but uh, in general, yeah, it seems I have an extra pawn or two and uh, in the safer king position. If he takes the b-pawn, I'll bring my rook to b1 and then be defending here. That, that looks good. He has to move the queen and then, then I'll try and figure out what to do with this c-pawn. But maybe I just ignore it and push the a-pawn. Okay, so he ignores things. Well, let's defend this pawn. I don't think he's doing anything immediately with his rooks. So I get to keep all my pawns. Yeah, he could have done that before here. Let's let's give the check. Then let's uh, oppose rooks. Like I said, get, get rid of one pair of rooks. Make it a little bit simpler here and try and win with... Uh, Two extra pawns. Should be enough to win. And his king, you know, is still more exposed than mine, so queen here to here would be good. Don't necessarily want to trade queens and get a messed up pawn structure, so yeah, let's Coordinate the queen and the rook a little bit. Now this trade I don't mind. It 
if it messes up his pawns rather than mine. He does get a check, but I get this pawn. So it's not like he's trapping me on the back rank. <clears throat> yeah, so I get here. And take here or here, whichever. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just use my rook, I guess, to defend. So let's bring the king out. Okay, check. And then if he steps forward, check. Steps forward, check. And then I take here. So that's good. I can get this pawn. <clears throat> and yeah, he gets mine. But uh, I, he takes there with check. Well, that's too bad. That's too bad. Well, I still have three on two over here. And his king is a little bit away from the action. So if I check, he'll just come closer. So let's go ahead and take. He has to move his rook. Okay, so my next step is to keep his king away from the action here. Wondering the best way to promote it. step by step I guess okay yeah so he goes there immediately <clears throat> stop his rook from getting behind the pawn
Now I can step in beside the pond here. So yeah, it takes careful planning. I think that was a good move. Yeah, I was I was worried about that one. So we'll see if this king is, is far enough away. There's a rule about how far away the king has to be. I think I may be just, uh, just in time here. Push, he checks. I step aside. Just got to keep it coming forward. <coughs> oh, that just loses. <laughs> you got you to gotta play for some kind of stalemate. Uh, I'm not going to run out of time here, guy. <laughs> okay. Going to see if I know how to do the, the checkmate <laughs> with the king and rook. <laughs> That's pretty insulting. Okay, he decided I know how to do it, and he resigned. <laughs> okay, well, I thought there were some interesting uh, in-game positions there. Let's go check a couple of them. <clears throat> so, yeah, with a position like this, so where I just went over here, to block his king out. What is the evaluation at this point? Evaluation is 4.6. So it looks like uh, it's it's winning, but uh, it'll take some work. This looks good. And did I did I give it up at any point after this? Keeping this four to five point and advantage. Yeah, it looks like I played this okay. Well, there's a seven point advantage with rook to f3. Ah, yeah, this is a nice move here. Shorten, shorten the, uh, the uh, time. But I just kept playing like this and uh, still always inching forward. Yeah, and even here, it was probably his best try. But uh, yeah, this is a winning position. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Interesting. It's saying even I could play this. I guess his king is already so far away. Yeah, he can't get his king any closer. So anyway, yeah, that's that's an important trick in the end game is remembering to uh, to check the king away. Let's see. Anything else? That well, looks like I had a pretty good game this time. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.